Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Burak Türker. I'm a civil engineer and uh, working as a test engineer, also support engineer for Proto Software. Today, uh, with my colleague Oles and I, we'll talk about performance-based design and assessment with Proto Structure. As an overview, uh, first of all, I will talk about how to model existing building, uh, including members, materials, uh, reinforcement, steel conditions, etc etc. After that, I will perform preliminary design and show you how to arrange reinforcement steel and how to copy them to other members. Then we will have a quick look on assessment user interface and check the assessment report. After all, my colleague Old will talk about protostructure open seas integration and uh, nonlinear members and material definitions. So let's get started. Here is the model that I will use for today's webinar. Modeling structural members is same as new building modeling. So uh, I will directly skip to uh, material definitions. With proto structure, you can edit member materials individually or uh, you can set default materials for all members as well. To uh, edit specific member material, uh, simply go to uh, go on the member, for example, this member, and uh, open member properties and uh, open section manager also. Here is the uh, default materials are uh, selected. Uh, I'm clicking on default. Here, uh, some of the concrete classes are listed on the left side. You can select one of these. Also, uh, you can add you can add new uh, concrete class. All you need to do is just uh, click on this plus sign, green plus sign. So you need to enter the parameters of this new uh, concrete class. Speech C16. So after selecting uh, the concrete class uh, materials for longitud longitudinal bar and link, link will also be visible and selectable. So you can also change the material class for <clears throat> the bars. After all, you can also get back to uh, default material selection. All you need to do is uh, press on reset to default button. Okay. Before closing the member properties uh, window, so uh, you should click on update. Otherwise, uh, all changes will gone. There will be no change. So you should after all changes for uh, geometric properties, also material, you need to uh, press on update before uh, closing the member properties dialog. Now I will show you the uh, second method. Uh, it can be done by from uh, building an analysis form. You can uh, set uh, default materials from this dialog. Instead of changing materials uh, for members one by one, you can change material class for uh, all concrete columns or concrete walls, beams at the same time. Similar dialog will open here. Uh, 
There is also rebar diameters uh, limitations. It's really useful for uh, preliminary design. You can pick which uh, diameters will used for uh, design uh, for all uh, protostructure use. Now uh, I want to talk about seismic parameters. So uh, we are for nonlinear uh, time history analysis. We we are using <clears throat> response spectrum, basic scaling uh, on ground motions. So the seismic parameters, uh, uh, especially response spectrum, should be uh, selected properly. Now I, I want to show you the uh, preliminary design. First, we will need to perform a building analysis. After uh, building analysis completed, I will show you the preliminary design. Also, how to uh, model existing steel bars and how to copy them to other uh, members. For preliminary design, I will simply open the reinforcement concrete uh, column wall design dialog. So I will design all of the members. After that, I will uh, get into one of the members and uh, design it for existing member and copy the existed reinforcements to other members. You can design all members uh, with simply one click. Also, I will show you how to design them uh, one by one. So preliminary design is uh, completed. Now, now I want to show you the uh, design for existed, uh, existing rebar information. All steel bars uh, listed here with their diameters and quantities. So you can uh, change them. For example, let's make it zero. Also, let's make it none. Also, uh, here, here the this dialog for longitudinal bars, and you can also change the shear bars. Uh, links first of all you need to select this edited uh, box here so you can decide on you can set uh, diameters for span for support also spacings are here let's make it 10. after editing uh, reinforcement bars for one uh, member. you can copy bars so all uh, pasteable or uh, members with have uh, which have same dimensions will be visible uh, will be shown by protostructure so you can choose them or you can uh, say paste bars to all if all uh, reinforcement details are same and uh, after selecting members, just press on paste bars. All reinforcement details are same now. For today, I will uh, use approximate steel ratios for uh, beams, but for example, for uh, example, I will show how to copy beams reinforcements also. So. Let's pick this one. So there is some uh, default bars are selected. You can uh, change the pattern. Uh, 
and for uh, changing existing uh, reinforcement details you can click on uh, the information and it will be changeable so we can change the uh, quantities also we can change the diameters of bars also we can uh, change the shear lengths quantities spacing And we cannot take the uh, equations here. So after arranging the bars, now we can copy it also. Again, similarly, uh, proto structure will show you uh, which ones can uh, paste the reinforcement information. Now, after arranging the uh, steel reinforcements, I want to give information about how to model existing buildings reinforcement conditions. Uh, when you assess the building, what you usually do is you go to building site and uh, take some measurements, you get information about corrosion levels, etc. Et so, uh, also you may have blueprints of building, but uh, existing building conditions after the measurements, if the existing building conditions may not uh, match these bl these blueprints. So with protostructure, you can easily model these kind of information. For example, I will show you the corrosion factor. Let's pick that member, right click on it. So uh, you can change steel uh, corrosion ratio, also you can change steel realization ratio. Here is some uh, default parameters are uh, listed. None, low, uh, 10%, 30% for medium or uh, and 50% uh, for advanced corrosion on uh, these members reinforcements. So let's pick 10. You can uh, enter steel realization ratio. Uh, As uh, I said, you may have the blueprints of the building, but uh, existing major existing uh, measurements on uh, existing building may not match these blueprints information. So again, just go on member and uh, open steel realization ratio. You can uh, decide on the uh, factor. It will directly proportional to uh, capacity of these members. So let's speak. 90%. After decide on the uh, value, you can apply to selected columns. You can uh, make multiple selection. You can apply to all, all columns in current story, and you can apply to all columns in model. Before I go into building assessment interface, I will talk about some uh, modeling limitations due to nonlinear uh, non analysis procedures. Firstly, uh, the, you shouldn't use uh, shell definitions for shear wall modeling. Uh, because finite element shell models are not available for uh, practical nonlinear analysis, uh, they may be used for academic research, academic purposes, but uh, mid peer uh, model is more practical so far. So we are using mid peer model for uh, wall models. Secondly, uh, in order to decrease the load of analysis, you should not include slabs into building model. However, uh, you can use finite element load decomposition for more accurate uh, slab load decom decompositions uh, to beams. So you can use uh, load decomposition uh, by finite element feature. So uh, let's have a quick overview on uh, assessment user interface. Pro 
Support structure supports uh, various methods for assessment. One of them is uh, displacement-based linear elastic method. Here is an, uh, you should pick linear elastic analysis. Displacement-based linear elastic uh, method, the method depends on elastic cord rotations. Uh, it's an approximate analysis uh, and has very strict limitations. Also, uh, it is not valid uh, for every structure since it's an uh, elastic method. It's, a, it's out of scope today. Here is the uh, conduct method validity controls. This uh, selection is for displacement-based uh, linear elastic method. So one of the other method is risk assessment method. Here you can see it. Risk assessment method, and uh, it's also uh, out of scope today since it's an also a linear method. However, it's an uh, important for a fast, it's an important method for a fast determination of building at risk. So user can quickly have an idea of building performance level between life safety and uh, collapse prevention. The other available methods are uh, pushover analysis and time history analysis. My colleague Oz will uh, give detailed information about these methods. Here is you can set uh, building information level. According to measurements you perform or uh, blueprints you have, you will decide on building information level. You can select limited or uh, detailed information, or you can set an uh, user-defined factor by picking other option. So limited uh, factor is uh, 0 0.875, and detailed factor is 1. Also, you can pick other and uh, enter user defined factor building information level uh, is directly proportional to, directly proportional to member capacities so under uh, building information level there are some uh, earthquake levels and performance goals uh, for example dd1 which is uh, may also known as uh, mce has uh, 2,475 return period. Our DD2, which is known as a design earthquake, which is 475 return period. And uh, you need to set performance goals according to uh, earthquake levels. The performance goal selection may be, may be made by due to uh, some code requirements, also maybe uh, made by uh, client expectations. At right side from here, uh, you can enter approximate steel ratios. Since we uh, designed, uh, we performed per, uh, preliminary design for walls and uh, columns, we, we will not use approximate steel ratios, but I will use uh, approximate steel ratio for beams. You can uh, set top and bottom uh, longitudinal steel bars separately also uh, you can enter link information and spacing link diameter and spacing uh, finally i will talk about general options normally earthquake load effects are uh, included uh, i'm talking about first option uh, normally load effects are included into moment curvature analysis uh, however uh, if you want to take only gravity loads for uh, maybe academic purpose or uh, you may want to see uh, other options. You can uh, pick this selection, uh, which uses only vertical loads for uh, moment curvature analysis. Also, uh, for second and uh, third option, normally plastic moments uh, are used for demand capacity ratio calculations. However, uh, users uh, for uh, to be on safe side or some uh, other reasons, user uh, may want to use yield capacity uh, for member uh, moment capacities. So you can determine uh, which capacity will be used for uh, demand capacity ratio calculations. It may be either plastic moment capacity or yield capacity. So these are the options for this. Also, uh, as I said, conduct method uh, velvety controls is for linear elastic 
existing building assessment method. So it may it has uh, strict limitations and not valid for uh, every structure. So there is some code requirements to uh, apply this method. And uh, we can check them uh, with selecting this conduct method uh, validity controls. Finally, I want to show you some uh, retrofitting uh, techniques. Firstly, I will talk about column jacketing. So simply go on members and right click and select insert uh, column jacket. Here you can uh, set column jacket thickness. Uh, you can you may want to uh, del delete the original column. Uh, maybe you don't want to uh, get this <coughs> existing column to get any load. Also, uh, you can set uh, this column jacket as non-moment uh, transferring jacket. Here's the material information about jacket. So uh, let's press OK. I set uh, all stories as similar stories. Uh, column jacket is modeled on every member. Second retrofitting, uh, retrofitting method I want to talk about is uh, retrofit walls. So open uh, wall properties dialog and go to 3D tab. There is some wall models listed here. So uh, if you you perform a nonlinear analysis, uh, you should use mid-peer retrofit wall model. You can uh, model it as a normal wall. So after modeling these uh, members, for design uh, these members, these new retrofit members, you should you can go uh, again reinforce concrete column wall design uh, window. These members will be listed uh, here, so you can see with X here uh, S14 X X14 X for all stories. These are uh, column jackets. Also, you can see new uh, retrofit wall uh, walls here. So you can perform similar designs as uh, normal uh, new building uh, modeling. So uh, my part is ends here. Uh, uh, now my colleague Oz will uh, continue the webinar. Uh, thank you for your attention so far. So I will leave the webinar to my colleague. Good morning, everyone. If there is any problem with my voice uh, or the screen, please write us. Uh, my name is Oz. I'm a software developer at Proto Software. Myself uh, is also a structural engineer. Uh, I share my screen now. Uh, I hope there is no problem. Uh, I really would like to extend my best wishes to you. Uh, please uh, follow the health uh, authorities' uh, guidance and uh, stay home uh, and stay safe. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, protest structure uh, opens his integration, uh, pushover analysis, Nonlinear time story analysis, uh, ground motion selection, ground motion scaling, and detailed reports. Firstly, uh, I want to talk about uh, OpenSys protest structure integration. OpenSys is an open system for earthquake engineering simulation, uh, which is uh, developed by uh, Peer uh, Pacific Earthquake Engineering Research Center. Uh, OpenSys uh, have been developed uh, in so many years uh, and used for uh, many research purposes and uh, real projects. Uh, let me tell you about uh, the interface a little bit uh, and 
then I will uh, talk about the open source again. Uh, here, uh, let's uh, open existing building uh, interface again, and uh, let's get over it. Uh, the project uh, uh, proto structure is saving the project for. Uh, applying the chance on the model uh, before you open the existing building assessment uh, or building assessment interface uh, project aid uh, when you open the existing building uh, assessment uh, interface uh, here uh, there are two nonlinear uh, approach are uh, represented uh, let's Click on pushover analysis. Uh, if you click on pushover analysis or uh, time store analysis, uh, protostructure warns you about uh, analysis model uh, generation. Uh, the gen generated analysis model uh, is used for uh, preparing uh, pushover uh, force vectors or uh, Determining the uh, period of uh, the structure for uh, scaling the ground motions. Uh, when you select pushover or time store analysis, here you can see uh, model, uh, model TCL export paths, model dot out uh, results paths, and uh, open seas paths are also shown here uh, you have to select the path of the open uh, executable file to use the uh, this module a proto structure uh, creates uh, and generates all the nonlinear definitions uh, member definitions and section definitions uh, and by using them uh, generates uh, TCL files for OpenSea's uh, environment. Uh, first, just click here and select OpenSea's uh, dot uh, exam. Uh, and here, uh, green uh, text is set. OpenSea's uh, executable file is found in the given the directory. Uh, let's talk about uh, earthquake levels and performance goals. Uh, DD1, DD2, DD3, and DD4 uh, are representing the uh, return periods of the given earthquake. Uh, DD1 is uh, 2,475 uh, years return period uh, earthquake. Uh, DD2 is uh, 475. DD3 is uh, 72 and DD4 is uh, 43 years return period uh, earthquakes it represents uh, these earthquakes. Uh, here's here's uh, predefined uh, performance goals, limited damage, uh, control damage, and collapse prevention. Uh, limited damage is the uh, same as immediate occupancy, and uh, control damage is life safety, and collapse prevention is also uh, and another uh, performance goals. Uh, let's talk about uh, pushover parameters before I uh, mention. Huh, before I mention. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, so sorry. Uh, some of our users said uh, the noise is a little bit interrupted. Uh, I will try to fix it. Uh, I hope it's okay now. Uh, for uh, pushover interface, uh, there is total number of steps, pushover direction, uh, target displacement, and control node. You can uh, see the analytical model of the uh, your selected model uh, is presented in here. Uh, it's presented here for selecting the control node. Uh, let me tell you uh, the logic uh, behind the pushover analysis. Uh, I will just show on uh, 
some multi degree of uh, system uh, simplified structure. Uh, let's say this is uh, our uh, very, very simplified. It's, it's just for explaining the uh, logic behind it. Uh, when you select the control mode, let's select uh, node one as our control mode. Uh, let's name them accordingly. Uh, let's select uh, control node uh, one. When we uh, generate the uh, analysis model for uh, our structure uh, model, uh, we generate uh, our uh, pushover force vectors. Those force vectors are now uh, only uh, used as equivalent static pushover analysis. Uh, that means uh, the force vector uh, in here, the forces, uh, reference forces that you push the structure is uh, created by uh, equivalent linear uh, static earthquake uh, analysis. And by using those force vectors and uh, pushover direction, you will decide which direction you will push the structure. And the target displacement is the uh, is the key point uh, where uh, you push the structure by uh, using those force vectors and controlling the uh, selected node. And if we uh, enter uh, 20 uh, centimeters uh, target displacement for uh, our diaphragm node, the structure will be pushed in that direction by using force vectors and uh, by controlling this node. Let me just clear my drawings and let's make analysis for uh, some. Uh, some of our users are asking if we do not give uh, rebar definitions for any structural members, what will be happened? Uh, Proto structure automatically warns you uh, about uh, members without uh, any valid rebar data. Uh, and if you uh, click OK, estimated rebar uh, values, uh, rebar ratios will be used for those elements. Uh, in order to express the nonlinear behavior on structural members, uh, you have to uh, enter your uh, materials, uh, properties, uh, rebar definitions, uh, and section sizes, sizes correctly. Let me just prepare the uh, force deformation and uh, tell you how we uh, ex how we prepare our nonlinear definitions. Uh, first of all, let's change uh, pen color as. All right. First, uh, for each members in our stru structural members in our uh, structure, we prepare fiber models. Uh, this is an highly exaggerated uh, drawing. Uh, sorry for its quality, <laughs> uh, but uh, I think it will, uh, it will show you the uh, logic behind it. Let's just turn the mouse and put it here and when we prepare our, our fiber models uh, with uh, all reinforcements uh, fiber locations we prepare uh, we prepare uh, our material models for each of these fibers uh, after preparing uh, by using Mander Mander uh, material models, uh, after preparation of those uh, fiber section definitions, nonlinear uh, section uh, definitions, uh, we prepare uh, our force deformation. We present, uh, we uh, export our force deformation relationships as a moment curvature relationships 
uh, if I, I think there's any uh, there's some connection problems. If there's any problem, uh, just tell, uh, write us. Uh, this is again highly exaggerated drawings. We prepare our uh, force deformation relationships uh, for both directions for members and assign assign those uh, nonlinear definitions to our members. You can uh, you can uh, see uh, how those uh, uh, force deformation relationships are prepared for each end uh, and for both directions and how uh, we idealize those uh, moment curvature relationships by using bilinear curve uh, from uh, our interface. Uh, plastic hint definitions uh, are uh, assigned uh, by using a finite length uh, hinge zone uh, method uh, to open seas. Uh, for uh, shear walls, we are also uh, using uh, six integration points and uh, we, we, we do not concentrate on one uh, region. We just uh, simply uh, give a nonlinear definition to the whole uh, member uh, integration points. And after doing our analysis you can uh, nonlinear analysis you can uh, here check out the pushover curve uh, and you can here uh, check uh, our detailed results uh, how much uh, plastic rotation is uh, occurred for uh, which members in which direction which local direction and for finite elements also you can see uh, the results and here's the node results for all nodes uh, in, are displayed in here. Uh, let's talk about detailed reports of the uh, pushover analysis. When we prepare uh, pushover analysis reports, there's uh, here you can see uh, member labels and plastic rotation values are here represented for both uh, I and J and uh, of the structure. Uh, let's talk about uh, how we assess the structure. Uh, at this phase of the webinar, uh, webinar, I will tell you, I will talk about more on our uh, roadmap, uh, what we are planning to do and what uh, new features uh, will be uh, prepared for this uh, nonlinear analysis methods. Here's uh, what I say uh, before, uh, inner force and uh, deformation uh, relationship and immediate occupancy, life safety and collapse prevention. Uh, we uh, prepare uh, those uh, safety conditions uh, those limit plastic rotations by using uh, the formulations uh, shown in above uh, and uh, at, at our uh, pushover analysis report we are showing our uh, pushover curve and uh, member failure type definitions you know if member is a member has a brittle uh, behavior, uh, it, it will work on a force, uh, it, the, the deformation is controlled by force, but we as uh, structural engineers, we didn't want the, that behavior, we uh, prefer tactile behavior and uh, all uh, ductility controls, ductility checks are uh, presented here and for member uh, assessment results, all members' uh, failure types, uh, storage shear ratios, and plastic rotation limits and plastic rotations we represent here. Uh, and let's 
talk more on uh, time store analysis also. Uh, if you select time store analysis, there's, there are three tabs uh, are available uh, for the user. Uh, for now, I will just use uh, default ground motions. Uh, the, those default ground motions are, are just uh, entered as is uh, for uh, giving rough information. I know uh, ground motion selection is very hard procedure. Uh, it's really it has really uh, strict limitations. If you select your ground motions not correctly, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> the behavior on uh, behavior of the structure is depends on those motions uh, very very much. Uh, you, let's say uh, add one ground motion. Uh, if to, to select the ground motion, you can just uh, click uh, in Y or X direction uh, columns, or you can just uh, use the buttons uh, above, above the table. Uh, Open time store, when you select open time store data file, uh, the program will uh, give you, uh, will let you uh, to select uh, your ground motions uh, from uh, any uh, folder. But for now, I will just use the uh, defaults. And let's see, uh, when you select the uh, Open time store data files, uh, as I said before, uh, the dialog uh, for selected files is open. Uh, when you uh, select, click preview data, uh, you will get the uh, raw uh, file uh, for ground motion. Uh, there is uh, the, the delta t, uh, delta t value. Uh, and number of points and, and other informations. Uh, those uh, records are taken from peer uh, strong motion uh, database. And you have to uh, enter your uh, delta T, uh, the T values uh, correctly. And by just previewing the DT values, uh, you, the delta T values, you uh, just enter them here. Uh, correctly and header lines to skip is uh, those uh, header lines uh, if we just uh, write 99 uh, for example uh, you, you can see uh, those uh, lines are skipped uh, also uh, we have to select these two numbers correctly uh, in order to in order to select the time story correctly, uh, let's uh, let's get on scaling uh, procedures. Uh, let's use uh, eleven uh, records for scaling. But uh, as you know, uh, the time story analysis uh, can last uh, really long. Uh, I will just use one record and analyze the structure by using it but uh, for scaling purposes I will use 11 records when you enter the uh, ground motion scaling uh, interface uh, there are some scaling parameters for now we are just uh, using basic uh, scaling procedures basic scaling method uh, to give more information about uh, basic scaling methods uh, and also to other uh, approach on basic uh, scaling procedures are also can be selected. Uh, let's just select scale our uh, ground motions and check our uh, structure. Check check our. Uh, let's just use one, not use average. Ah, let's let's see plot uh, on on the scale region. Ah. Uh, those factors, uh, the period of the structure, spectrum factor, uh, spectrum factor is used to uh, used for 
uh, where do you want to uh, scale uh, your ground motions? Uh, ground motion for ground motion scaling procedures. Uh, all uh, ground motions are uh, entered to new mark uh, step by step uh, integration procedure, and by using it, uh, you will get. Uh, uh, the acceleration response spectra of the uh, ground motions, and by using those acceleration response spectra, you will get uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, by using those uh, strong uh, motions, you will get acceleration response spectra, and average of the uh, those response spectra uh, will be uh, above the uh, elastic spectrum, scaled elastic, spe elastic spectrum uh, with spectrum factor uh, given here. And let's talk about uh, upper bound and lower bound factors. Uh, those factors are uh, where do you want to uh, scale uh, which in, 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 in which region we scale our uh, ground motions. Uh, if you select those parameters, uh, you will see directly the boundaries are changed. And let's see on just scaled regions and closed scaled spectra. As you see, when we select uh, average uh, as scaling method, uh, just you can see here the dashed lines. Uh, first dashed line is targets, our target spectrum. Uh, second is our average uh, scaled ground motions. Let's plot uh, unscaled spectra or plot average. This, this is the unscaled average, and this green dashed line is scaled average. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, let's let's say. We uh, just check uh, the scale factors. Since we scale uh, by using the average, all scale factors of the uh, ground motions are the same. Uh, if you do not want to uh, use it like this, you can uh, scale each, uh, each uh, by using each spectrum uh, option. When you use each spectrum option, it will just uh, scale each spectra each spectra, uh, acceleration spectra, by using target uh, uh, spectrum. And if you use it like this, uh, your scale factors will be different, and it can be uh, used like this. And let's remove those ones and scale one more time. And let's conduct and manner time story analysis I will say uh, okay again uh, I want to use uh, approximate reverse reverse definitions for all those members who doesn't have any reverse definitions uh, in this stage of the nonlinear analysis uh, element force deformation relationships are prepared uh, those force deformation relationships are, uh, as I mentioned before, moment curvature uh, relationships. And as you can see, uh, you can track the uh, Progress of the nonlinear time and story analysis by using uh, uh, the the interface. The step information will be given over there. Uh, as I uh, as as the analysis continues, but uh, I will I want to mention about more on our roadmap. Uh, first of all, we uh, want to. We want to support uh, other uh, structural codes uh, assessment procedures uh, and also custom 
member uh, performance levels, member plastic rotation limits, or uh, custom uh, performance goals uh, implemented uh, in such a structure. Uh, and we will analysis post processes processor for uh, open season analysis not uh, only for now we are we can uh, obtain all results as plain text uh, we post process them automatically to uh, use an assessment procedures uh, but uh, in our uh, new version uh, process protest structure 2012 uh, there will be analysis post processor uh, and you can track the deformed shape of the structure and you can track the plastic hinge occurrence uh, at our post processors and the for push over analysis uh, the force vectors uh, reference force vectors uh, will be enlarged uh, for now uh, as i mentioned before we using equivalent static uh, earthquake uh, force vectors, but uh, model pushover analysis uh, will be implemented also. Uh, first mod, second mod, end mod, or combined mod uh, analysis. We are planning to uh, enlarge the scaling methods. Uh, for now, we are just using basic uh, scaling. Uh, but uh, another uh, another uh, procedures will be uh, implemented. They are on our plans. Uh, sorry about uh, long duration, but uh, as you all know, uh, the new time story analysis is last uh, the analysis duration of uh, it a little bit longer uh, uh, after doing the uh, time story analysis i will uh, check out detailed reports of uh, time story analysis uh, you can you can uh, Select and uh, see all time step results and uh, average envelope results of all uh, analysis. We are using average envelope results uh, of nonlinear time history analysis. Uh, as you can see here, uh, uh, I, I want to mention about more on uh, how we uh, determine those two analysis. Uh, we give uh, two uh, one motion uh, for two principal axes, and for scaling, uh, we are just using. Uh, Uh, combining them in and uh, combining them in by combining them and uh, for each uh, set uh, each one each one of the set uh, there will be two analysis conducted uh, let's say this is one and one x and this is one y uh, first analysis is uh, the principal direction is directions are one x and one y, and for other uh, analysis, the second one uh, just running right now is just uh, switched. Uh, the directions of the ground motions are switched and uh, repeated again. Uh, Proto structures. Uh, Proto structure gives you uh, a lot of time to uh, 
save save your uh, time by post processing whole batch data. Uh, as you can see, uh, the number of points in uh, one motion files is uh, 2,500. For each analysis with this uh, output time step, uh, you, by the way, you can change the uh, output time steps by entering here. Uh, if you change uh, this uh, value from 0 0.02 to 0 0.04, uh, the results are recorded by uh, keeping uh, by for uh, those uh, selected intervals and for each member uh, for each end uh, i end and j end uh, for these uh, time steps uh, all member responses my member dynamic responses are uh, created in uh, model directory let's just check those uh, out files uh, here in project folder the open source folder uh, the first analysis is done analytic model is created in here uh, stcl files and here uh, as you can see uh, a lot of data is generated if we uh, open this one with notepad you can see this is the uh, raw data uh, by post-processing those amounts of raw data uh, we can prepare uh, our detailed results our details are represented as average envelope results and you can select and see each specific uh, time history and also not uh, only envelope results of each analysis you can go and see each time step results and those results are also uh, shown in detailed reports this is this one is average envelope results uh, and also you can get specific envelope results of the member uh, for any uh, time history analysis or you can just simply click and specific time results let's say hundreds uh, hundred time step uh, at that given time step the report is prepared uh, and you can well, you can also check uh, detailed results from uh, those reports and also uh, report of the assessment report of the uh, time story analysis let's uh, check the time story nonlinear time story analysis uh, assessment report uh, here the, the ground motions are presented uh, and scaling and also scale factors and also same assessment uh, values are presented in here uh, thank you for uh, all thank you all for listening uh, this, this is all uh, i want to talk about uh, our uh assessment uh, interface uh there will be survey uh, after the webinar if you can kindly fill out that survey it will be much appreciated uh, i hope it was beneficial for you i hope uh, you enjoyed our presentations and i want to also thank to thank to you my uh thanks to brock uh, for his uh, good presentation uh if you have any questions please drop them uh, to the uh, our support centers and thank you for thank you all for uh, joining our webinar uh if you want to uh, know uh, and if you want to know our latest webinars uh, if you want to 
be being informed our next webinars you can follow our uh, instagram or uh, linkedin profiles thank you